Hello, wedding editors and photographers, and other photographers too. How's it going? Casey here from Aston Labs, and welcome to our photo deep dive. Here in the deep dive, we go over specific techniques, ideas, concepts. Uh, we analyze them, play with them, not necessarily to tell you the right or wrong way to do something, but to offer a different perspective or perhaps an alternative method to working with your edits. Now, if you are someone who loves editing photos almost as much as you enjoy taking them, then welcome home. Let's settle down, get cozy, and talk about editing wedding photos in Capture One. Now, as we do with all of our edits, I'm gonna be using our three-step workflow. And if you're unfamiliar, we have lots of videos talking about how the three-step workflow works, but I'll give you the lowdown. Essentially, you just apply the look. So here I'm gonna use, uh, we'll use Cinema 400, apply the look. Adjust exposure and correct white balance. I think for this one, I could use a little bit more warmth and maybe a hint of the magenta. And there you go. Three steps to a consistent look. Now, there may be other things that you would want to do, and we do have other tools for that. So, say you're looking at this image and you like the exposure, you don't want to blow out the highlights, but you want to bring up some of the shadows. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scroll down to where it says Tone. That is our Tone Profile section. And with the Tone Profiles, they are essentially contrast management tools. Um, they're built based off of the Fuji Frontier 3000 film scanner. Um, and the way it works is I'm just going to go ahead and apply Shadow Soft. And there you go. So here's our before and after. And you can see it's just recovering a lot of that data. Now, I have been playing around with another little trick if you're unfamiliar. So I've applied that tone profile. Um, if I want to, I can right click it and just say, apply it again. There you go. Okay, so now I see there's so much more shadow detail going on. Um, now I don't have a layers panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna bring one up here. And if I'm feeling like this is too strong, I just dial back. And yeah, I mean, for me, that looks pretty good. I don't necessarily think that I need this. I personally like this photo living in a little more contrasty area, but it definitely works also uh, with a little bit more of this detail recovered. Uh, let's go ahead, we'll move on to our next photo. Let's see, now for this photo, I think I'm going to go with, uh, we'll do Fuji Original. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll apply that. And again, we're just gonna work through our three-step workflow. So apply the look, adjust exposure and correct the right balance. I think for this one, it just needs a little bit of that warmth. There we go. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let's do before and after. So there's our before and after. And Fuji 400 is such, and Fuji 400 is such a great style. Um, go ahead, I think I'm gonna do all soft to just sort of, again, I'm bringing up the shadows and I'm bringing down the highlights. I'm doing a little bit of recovery work here. Um, and let's see, here's there's the before and after, and you can just see all those shadows come back up, but that's looking pretty good. Maybe I can also do lens correction, and lens correction is just helping to balance the exposure sort of over the image, getting rid of the distortion and the vignetting that you might see in some of the images, especially if you're shooting wide open. Um, but that's just a quick little tool that can help. Now, if you were facing some uh, noise, you were shooting at a higher ISO, we do have a little noise reduction tool, you can do this. And uh, yeah, I don't know, that's looking pretty good. I like how that looks. Again, we'll just do our before and after. So there's before and after, and that's looking great. Um, okay, let's move on to this next image. Um, for this one, let's see, I'll do, turn on my lens correction. Yeah, there's a lot of vignetting there. And I think for this one, let's go for the founder's pack. Let's do Portra Plus. There we go, okay, so. There we have the Portra Plus. Now Portra 160 Plus, it's like an enhanced version of the Portra original Portra 160. But it has been modified in a way that uh, offers a little bit more natural skin tones um, and a little more punch than Portra 160 naturally has. So uh, my first step, I apply the look. Now I'm going to adjust exposure. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit just because I'm seeing so much of just sort of this like overblown area here as, as far as uh, exposure goes. Um, and I'll bring out my shadows. Uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, one other thing, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'll remove this tool. Now, one thing that we can do is we can also, if we're in a, whoa, <laughs> I must have uh, selected one of these uh, white balance uh, presets here. The white balance presets are just sort of there to help you uh, get closer to where you need to go if you shot in a very wrong Kelvin. Um, for this, I think just editing by hand did, did fine. Maybe I'll actually cool it off now that I'm looking at it again. Um, 
yeah, that's looking pretty good. Um, so if you are in an environment where you're still getting a lot of contrast, we have this handy dandy tool that was built specifically to help um, with the power of strobes. When you're using a strobe, it often introduces a lot of contrast, but that doesn't mean that contrast doesn't exist other places. Um, so here's strobe soften, and you can see it is really, it's pulling that back. So a lot of that, the harshness of this uh, contrast right here, I'll zoom in a little bit. And there we go. And adding strobe soften can really help quite a bit. So there's that before and after with strobe soften. Wow, that looks awesome. Uh, that's great. Okay, so then here's our before and after with the style. But yeah, I'm really digging it. Um, and I think that, that is fun. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's move on to, let's do a black and white edit this time. Um, I think, yeah, we'll go to our artisan black and white. And this contains some of the most iconic black and white films. Um, I think for something like this, I want a I want something a little more neutral and HP5 is that it is sort of this nice soft smooth transitions between that tonal contrast that you have within the style and yeah I think I'll bring up my exposure a little bit but not too much I like this it's sort of a soft look it's a little mysterious um, and yeah I think that that's pretty good if I wanted to there are certainly other things we have our red filter our green filter and yellow filter. I'm gonna use the yellow filter. I think it's just, it's bringing to light her skin. Um, originally, like the yellow filter was sort of a pre-Photoshop tool if you were shooting black and white, sort of give this nice soft luminance to skin. But uh, yeah, I like that. Now, of course, with the before and after here, huge difference because one is in color and one is not, but I still like how that looks. And uh, yeah, this is, HP5 is definitely a great, great style for a softer look like this. Let's do a couple more. Um, I think, yeah, oh man, I love this image. Okay, let's go ahead for this one. I'm going to reach for the Cinema Everyday Pack. Um, I'll go ahead, I'll apply our look here. And oh, you know, I forgot to talk about this. That was the base characteristics panel that we pulled up earlier. If your camera under the ICC profile, if it houses Pro Standard, make sure you're selecting Pro Standard um, and Film Standard when it comes to the curve. Now that's sort of where our styles are based on and how we built them to emulate film. So make sure that those are selected. I know that there's a lot of people out there that will do things like linear response because it sort of gives you a little bit more dynamic range, um, which can look good, but it is definitely a different look. If you do use linear response, you're gonna have to bump up your exposure quite a bit in order to get to a similar place. Um, so here, create a new copy. There we go. And I'm going to bring this back, go back to my film standard and we'll just take a peek between these two. Wow, I got surprisingly close on the uh, exposure. But here at the with the film standard, again, um, this is measured to be emulating actual film. Um, on the film standard, you can see the exposure's at zero, still giving me all the leeway I want, positive, negative, what have you. Um, and with the linear response, I've already had to crank it up about a full stop. But uh, again, I, I guess with a similar exposure here, I am seeing a little bit more detail um, in these highlights than I am over here with just the regular film standard, but it's pretty negligible. Um, and I don't know, I like I like a little bit more of this contrast that I feel like it's giving. And again, that's also a little bit of extra work. Now I have to dial that in. Um, and so yeah, setting yourself up for success here is really great and just select the pro standard if it's supported by Capture One and make sure you're on film standard. Um, the one exception to that would be if you're using the Fuji X-T3, in which case you would select Provia standard. Okay, so there we go. Apply the style. It actually looks really good. I'm going to just use, I don't, yeah, the, I think the exposure, well, let's take a look. Maybe I can do uh, our lens correction and we'll get a little bit of this vignetting. I think I see some up here. Yeah, okay. So applying that, now it looks a lot more evenly exposed. Um, I don't think I'm going to touch the exposure at all. I think I'm just going to warm it up and just add, yeah, man, that looks so good. I love Cinema 400, it is definitely, I actually think it's my favorite preset that we have. Um, but it is, uh, yeah, it is lights out good. Maybe I'll do Shadow Soft just to bring up a little bit of the detail uh, in his pants and her hair, but again, it's so minimal. Let's go ahead and I will do our before and after. That was awesome, okay. Let's see, how many more do we have? We have quite a bit more, okay. I'm gonna see how fast I can just go and edit these photos while I'm talking to you. So for this one, we'll go ahead and yeah, why not, we'll just do Fuji 400H. I'm going to 
apply the look, dust exposure, correct white balance, and this one almost certainly, there we go. Um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. And go for this one. I love this shot by Colby Moore. Let's see. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go back to actually the cinema every day. We're going to do double X. Double X is just, oh man, love this black and white. Got big chunky grain. Got a lot of personality. I'm going to go ahead and yeah, bring that up. I just, I love, it has a little bit of this faded um, highlights that looks so good. Um, I think I'll use, yeah, there we go. Highlight soft just to bring down the sky a little bit, um, but not too much. And that is awesome. Okay, here we go. On to the next one. We'll go with uh, Fuji Original. I'm going to do Fuji 400H. And there we go. I'll crank up my exposure a little bit and cool this off just to give it those beautiful Fuji greens. Maybe I'll add a, little, a touch of magenta in there just to give more warmth to their skin. Um, but yeah, that looks great. Okay, uh, onward. This one, this photo, uh, I know is one that we often edit with, um, that we have edited before with Fuji 800Z because 800Z has these beautiful pink sort of dreamy highlights and look what it does to the skin. It just adds this just very rich sort of magenta and um, life into skin and these beautiful pinks into the highlights. I mean, I love this photo in general, and I think it does a great job. It can go a lot of ways. I can make it even brighter. We can make it be a little bit more light and airy. Again, it feels very ethereal. Um, let's see. Here we have a pro standard. So there we go. Switch to pro standard. I'm seeing it take a little bit away of some of those interesting color shifts. And film standard, I bet, is just going to be the same as auto. It usually is. So I, I'm not too worried about that. But we just talked about it. So there we go. Um, I'll go ahead. We'll do, we'll do all soft. And I think I can even push a little bit further. Yeah, there we go. That looks great. So there's our before and after. Again, 800Z, a lot of contrast and saturation, but it has those very dreamlike um, qualities to the highlights that I just, uh, I love, I love, I love. Okay, onward. Just speeding through these. Let's go for, let's do vintage. This is sort of a, a interesting one to do vintage on. Apply the look. We'll just exposure. I know this, I'm seeing so much vignetting down here. And let's do our lens correction. Wow, okay. Maybe I'll pull back a, just a touch on the exposure. And I think this needs some warmth. Yeah, we'll go ahead. I'm gonna push this. Yeah, I think that right about there is looking pretty good. Now, if you are unsure sort of how to find a natural resting spot for your white balance, one thing you can do, one thing that I really enjoy doing and it's kind of fun is you go way too far in one direction. Oh my gosh, okay. And then you just slowly move it back and forth. Like at this point, I'm not even looking at my slider, I'm looking at the photo. And where my brain tells me that it's starting to look natural, I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, right about there. I guess I don't know where it was before, but that's where I'm ending. Now you can do the same thing with the tint. Tint goes certainly a lot farther. Um, we'll go ahead and just, I'm going way too far and then just slowly sliding it back and forth until I find a natural resting spot. And yeah, right about there. Oh, well, that actually looks a little, little bit too much. Okay, there we go. Let's do our before <laughs> and after. And just those three steps, apply the look, adjust exposure, correct white balance. Working on getting that down is going to add so much consistency to your edits and your workflow. It's gonna make the way that you edit faster. Um, I think I'm going to also add, yeah, all soft here. Again, if I did want to do our actual little secret trick, that is way too much. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take off this panel. I don't need to worry about it too much. Um, so that's way too much. I did add that as that extra layer. We'll go ahead. We'll pull back on our, our layers tool, and then I'm just going to dial that back and just feel out kind of in a similar way that I was doing with the, uh, with the white balances. I'm just moving it back and forth until I find a nice little resting spot. I think that that's looking good. So yeah, not too much, but just enough that it's pulling back some of the detail and we're seeing a little bit more. Okay, moving on. Oh man, this is another really great one from Marcos Valdez. I've edited this before and I think for this one, I'm gonna use Acros. Acros is very easily my favorite black and white. It has such depth, such character. The blacks are black, the whites are white, and it just kills it like every time. Um, I really enjoy this. In fact, I'll use it on the next photo I'm seeing down here because I really enjoy using it with um, portraits, things that you want connection with. Now, I love everything going on in this photo in general. 
maybe I'll bring it up just a little bit. I love the contrast. Oh my God, this photo is incredible. Okay, anyway, Acros is just a, a great one, especially if you're looking for a connection with your subject, I think. And I think that this does it an awesome job. It has just small grain, very uh, fine, and it does wonders. Okay, and like I said, I'm gonna do it on this one as well, um, just because, yeah, I mean, there, click, done. I feel fine with that. Um, I don't need to, yeah, I'm not gonna touch anything else. I think it looks great. But I will do an alternate edit just so I'm not doing too easy. It feels like a cop out to do a black and white to, against the black and white. And let's see, what's a nut pack we haven't used yet? Uh, maybe Portra, why not? I'll do Portra 400. And I'm gonna pull up my exposure just a little bit. And let's see, I think it could use some lens correction. Yeah, there's a before and after with the lens correction. And actually now that I did that, I'm gonna pull down the exposure by just a little bit. And yeah, I think that that is good. Let's do our before and after here. And that is how easy it is to edit in Capture One. Now, if you do have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us at support at massandlabs.com. You can join our Facebook group too. We are a community of over 50,000 photographers. We love new members. We love to see your work. And if you don't have any of our presets, Hop on in, drop a raw and say, I wanna see somebody edit this photo and we will do it. Whether it's myself or one of our community members, we are always game to help out another fellow photographer. You can also reach out to us at m.me forward slash Maston Labs if you have any specific questions um, and you can chat with us there. But thank you guys again so much for joining us. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you wanna see in the next edit that we're doing. And until next time, have a great day and happy editing.